I'm glad that you're here with us today. If you are online and you are watching this bald head, this is Pastor Mark at First Baptist Church of Welcome, and we are so happy that you're here with us today to uh, to celebrate the Lord um, and to to honor Him in three new believers uh, following Jesus' command to, to be baptized in His name. So it's exciting, right? doesn't love this the story of Zacchaeus Isn't that a great story you know there's so much there that that I think that we we miss by reading it as just a regular Bible story you know that is you know guy climbs a tree meets Jesus you know Jesus comes to his house gives away all his money um, you know there's just so much more to it Leonard uh, Ravenhill, he wrote, There was a time when people came to church to meet God. Now they come to church to sing songs and hear stories about them. Do you feel like that's true sometimes in today's churches? And, you know, we love hearing the stories about God. But do we come here to find them? Are we looking for him to, to impact our hearts and our lives when we walk through the doors? Do we, do, believe, do we believe what it says in Hebrews 13, 8, where it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever? Psalm 63, verses 1 through 5, the psalmist write, O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land, and there is no water. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied with marrow and fatness, my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Don't, don't you wish that you were like that? I hope that you are. Maybe you are. I don't know. To, to feel that joy, to have that praise, to know that God is working in your life in, in such a way. Now, some of the most amazing things from the life of Jesus is when he took time to stop and encounter people when he would stop and talk to them things that are recorded whenever Jesus met something brothers and sisters their lives were transformed they were changed that's what we saw today that's what what we experience in our lives if we've given ourselves to Christ so today we're gonna see how Jesus responded to the outcast Zacchaeus who was far away from him. Our first point in your bulletins today is Zacchaeus sought to see Jesus. In verses 1 through 9, Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press because he was little in stature. So who was Zacchaeus? Well, we, we learned, right? He was a rich tax collector. To his people, he was a sinner. and Well, he was a sinner because he was a thief, right? He was taking more from, from the people and taxes and, and lining his own pockets with it. But Zacchaeus had, had heard how wonderful Jesus was. He had heard the stories, and he sought to see him. And that's great. Because the word that's used in the Greek for the word sought means to search with a passion, to have a craving, to have an intense desire. Doesn't that change the word sought for you? Because it means a whole lot more than just looking. It means that you really, really desire, you want to find him. 
In the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 21, it says, The same came before, to, therefore, to Philip, which was of Bethsaida, of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. So many times in the, in the New Testament were there people that were seeking Christ. I hope that you are today. I hope that that's what your heart desire is. Not just today because you're here, but every day. And there are a lot of precious promises in the Bible, isn't there? Jeremiah 29, 13 tells us, And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. When you look for me with all your heart, you're going to find me. That's God telling us, uh, t telling us that. In James chapter 4, verse 8, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Draw close to, to God. And then he draws close to you. That's a relationship, isn't it? Isn't that what that is? That's what he wants with each one of us. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, meaning God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. Is that a promise or what? If we seek him, if we continue to seek him, then he rewards us. What kind of, what better reward is there than to get a reward from God, right? So for, for Zacchaeus, he was seeking God. He was seeking Jesus. But there was an obstacle. He couldn't get close. It was that huge crowd that was, was doing the same thing, that was trying to see Christ also. He wanted to find Christ. But he couldn't. Brothers and sisters, sometimes there are things in our lives that keep us from seeking and seeing Jesus, isn't there? Aren't there things in our, that we let in our lives that, that stand as a blockade to us, that stand in our way? What are some of the roadblocks in your life? Do you have a crowd? Are there people in your life that, whose opinions or their unbelief keep you from, from seeking them? Maybe you're, maybe you're super busy. Anybody busy? Maybe the busyness of your life. Maybe you're just too distracted to hear God. Of course, there's always our sin. Our sin is going to keep us from delving into his word, from spending time on, in prayer with him. Because he just makes us make excuses, right? Y'all know what excuses are, right? There are people that made excuses for not coming in here today. We need to overcome those roadblocks in our lives, beloved. We need to do whatever it takes to see Jesus. So in our scripture, our second point is that Jesus stopped for Zacchaeus. In verses 4 through 6, God's word said, And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he, he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came up to the place, he looked up and he saw him, and he said unto him, Zacchaeus, Make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. This is a sinner, guys, just like us, right? Sitting up in a tree. There's so much that we can learn 
from Jesus' encounter with Zacchaeus. Jesus sees you. He sees you. Can you wrap your head around that? We go through this life doing what we do. But do you know in your heart that Christ sees you? He knows what you're going through. And if you're going through a storm or if you're battling sickness, if you're battling depression, he wants to bring you his peace. Jesus loves you. He loves you. He loves every one of you. I mean, it was his love that motivated him to stop for Zacchaeus. It was that same love that not too long after that sent him to the cross for you and for me. Here's something scary. Jesus knows your name. He knows you. He knows your name. He created you. He knows everything about you. I know some of you are sitting to go, I know all this stuff. I'm bored now. But do you know it? You know the words, but do you feel them? Because Jesus calls us to make haste to. He's calling us to get moving, to not delay, to seek him. Because just because you've accepted Jesus and, he, and he's in your heart doesn't mean that you're looking for him. Because most of us, most of the people that are listening to my voice right now have replaced Jesus in their life with something else that's calling them. Something else other than Christ. How did Zacchaeus respond to Jesus when Jesus told him, called him by name and said, come out of the tree? He made haste, didn't he? He hurried down that, that tree. That little man scurried. Probably looked like a squirrel. He came down and went. Went with Christ. And what was the result of his encounter with Jesus? Joy. Joy. Because you know, brothers and sisters, joy can only come from God. It can only come from God. We, we can't get joy. We can have happiness. But true joy only comes from God. Psalm 1611 says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right, at thy, thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. That's a promise, right? Jesus wants to come to your house today. He does. The problem is, is, that, is that so many of us leave Jesus right here on Sunday morning. As soon as that, fir, that foot crosses that threshold to leave here, Jesus is here. We don't take him with us. We won't wake up with him tomorrow to take him to our job. He won't drive there. He won't, he won't interact with us. He'll interact with us. We won't interact with him. Because we're not seeking him. We're not willing to work for it. We're not willing to climb a tree to encounter Jesus. And here, I'm going to tell you, God puts trees in all of our lives, actual and metaphorical, ways for us to see Christ every day. Will you open your heart and let Jesus in?
So Zacchaeus took him to his house. He was getting dinner ready for him and everything, and guess what? Our third point was that the crowd, they complained. The people that, that were there, the, 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 uh, the Jews, the Israelites, in verses 19, 19, verse 7. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I had dinner with a sinner last night. Whole house full of them. My family. Every day, right? Jesus was called, what? The friend of sinners. I mean, that's what it tells us in Luke 7, 34. But the religious leaders didn't like that. I say religious because religion is the problem. Not faith. It's religion. If you have a question about that, see me afterwards. I'll, I'll tell you what I think about that. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 9 through 12. It tells us, in Jesus, And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at, at the receipt of custom. And he saith unto him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. <coughs> and it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, Behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. That's why he came. He didn't come to, 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 to heal the, the healthy. He came to save the lost. You probably heard this old adage, this old saying, that the church is, isn't a museum for saints, but a hospital for sinners. This is not a country club. This is not a meeting house for social gathering, though we can be social. This is a place for us to find Christ, to find God, to have a relationship, to seek Him, and to find Him. Are you a sinner? Then know that Jesus has come for you. And our fourth and final point for today was the obvious that Zacchaeus' life was transformed. In verses 8 through 10 in chapter 19. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to this house for so much as he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and save that which was lost. That which was lost. That was me. That was me. And I'm not going to lie, there's some days when I feel lost still. But I know that Christ is with me. The fruit of salvation in Zacchaeus' life, which is the same in all of our lives, was good works. In other words, because Christ was in his heart, because he had Jesus, he wanted to do good. He wanted to do the right things. We don't do good things to get to heaven because we can't be good enough. We have to, we have to have Christ in our hearts and he, that knowledge, that, that passion comes from Jesus himself because we want to do it, not because we have to do it. 
We aren't saved by our works, but faith without works is dead. What that means is that, is that maybe if we're not doing anything, if we haven't been changed enough to have that feeling to, to follow Christ, to, to do the good things, maybe we're not really saved. Jesus himself said, by their fruits, by our fruits, they'll know you. The fruits are the good things that we do, the things that we do in his name. The things that we do for him and not for us. Because we are selfish. Right? How many of us don't do something without expecting something from somebody else? I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this on my little list over here so I can say, hey, remember when I helped you? Can you help a brother out? It's not, what, it's not what Jesus wants. You do it because you're supposed to, because it's the right thing to do. There were two things in Zac- Zacchaeus' life that were part of his transformation, his almost immediate transformation, right? It was his generosity and his willingness to make restitution. He was going to give it back to the people he stole from. He was going to give back four times what he took. And see how much Jesus cares for family? Because he says, salvation has come to this house. Family is important. Family is so important. In Acts chapter 16, verse 31, it says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Believe. If you're the only ones in your family who were saved, pray for your parents. If it's you, kids, pray for your kids. If it's you, parents, pray. Have that conversation daily. At the beginning of the story, we saw Zacchaeus seeking Jesus. But long before that, brothers and sisters, Jesus had already been seeking Zacchaeus. Because he came to seek and save the lost. Were you lost? And now you're found? Can I get amen? Amen. Amen. Jesus is seeking you today. I have to imagine that, that, that not everybody that's hearing my voice right now believes 100% that Jesus is looking for me. Maybe there are mountains, there's something standing in your way. Maybe it's your problems in life that are, that are overcoming your ability to see that. Whatever it is, He's looking for you. He wants you. But you need to seek him. You need to have a desire to want him in your heart, in your life. Are you like the crowd? Are you you keeping other people from finding Jesus? And if you are, then you need to repent. You need to stop. Are you more like Zacchaeus? Are you overwhelmed by your sins? And seek Jesus. Or have you been running from Jesus? Oh my gosh, I know what that's like. I did it for a long, long time. Make haste and run to Jesus today. You know... As I think about my life and my walk, you know, Jesus gave me a tree to climb. 
And I was much older. I was much older than Danielle when she, when she accepted Christ before I came to him. Because I was like everybody else. I was running hard the other way. I was running hard. And I grew up in a church. And I knew who God was. So you can imagine when I read those words in my Bible that said, even Satan knows God. Even Satan knows Scripture. How that cut me to the heart. Because I read it as, I'm just like Satan. I can know God. I can talk about him. I can say everything that it says in here. I can read this to, from cover to cover 15 times. But unless I apply it, unless I feel it in my heart, unless it becomes a part of my life, it's nothing. It's just stories. I had to seek him. And so do you. Because if you don't, then you're stagnant. You're a pew sitter. And that's not what he calls us to be. Get down out of your trees. Seek him today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, oh Abba, in my mind's eye I see Zacchaeus sitting in that tree. I imagine him running through that crowd being bumped around by, because of his size and how, how often the world has felt just like that to me. To be beat up. To be being kept from being able to, to, to get to where I want to go, to see what I seek. And Lord, you gave me a tree that was a branch that was connected to the vine. And Jesus told me to come down to follow him. Lord, I pray that for those that are hearing my voice today that, that if that they feel like Zacchaeus, if their life resembles a bit, even for just this moment, that they would understand the whole story. That they would seek you. That they would find you. And Lord, when they find you, you just take over. You transform us. Thank you, Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to be with my brothers and sisters throughout the day and, and from then on, that you would bless us and keep us. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for Zacchaeus. Thank you for Jesus who stretched out his arms on that cross and died for each one of us. We love you. We honor and praise you in the precious name of the one who died on that cross on Calvary. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. All God's children said, amen. And so we give you an opportunity. We're going to sing one more song which is appropriate since Jesus came into my heart, right? We give you an opportunity. If you want to come up and pray with, with me or one of the brothers, you're more than welcome. Don't be proud. Let us pray with you. You don't have to tell us what it's about. Just let us pray with you. If, if you want to join the church, you haven't made that decision, you can come on up. Of course, you don't have to do that. You can see me out, out in the back. But we still give you an opportunity. But the biggest reason, the important reason, is for the reason that you observe today. 
is that if you have never accepted Jesus, if, if you have a question that you did, that, that maybe you didn't, maybe you don't have fruit, maybe you're, you know, the Spirit has, has moved you to a point to make that walk up here. And if you don't make the walk up here, then see me later. But don't wait. And if you're online, you don't have to see my bald head. You can stop right there where you're at. You can just go right to God. You can just ask Him. Tell Him that you're a sinner. Tell Him that you need Jesus in your heart. Tell Him you need Him in your life. Say it with your voice. Say it with your heart. The Bible tells us that you will be saved. But don't wait. Because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know what the next second is going to bring. I say that all the time. And some of you guys that get tired of hearing it, I guess. But it really is true. We've all known people that have been taken away really, really quickly. And if they don't know Jesus, then they will not be in heaven, no matter how good they are. All right, so uh, welcome once again. We are so uh, glad that you're here for Baptism Sunday. And so we're going to go into that part of our service uh, right now. Um, the passage of Scripture I was going to read to you was just like a couple verses, but I'm just going to jump right into Romans chapter 6. It kind of covers baptism as it's read in the Bible. And a verse, uh, verse 1 says, What shall we then? Uh, shall we continue in, in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. Uh, how shall... We who died to sin live any longer in it. Or do you not know that as many of us, uh, as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? In verse 4, uh, therefore were you baptized with him through uh, baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised uh, from the dead by the glory of the Father, uh, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Knowing this, that our old man, um, because we have an old man and a new man, our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might uh, be done away with, uh, that we should uh, no longer be uh, slaves to sin. For he who has died um, has been freed from sin, um, now, if we died with Christ, we believe that he shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, uh, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him, for death has died that he, ha that he died. He died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive in God and Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, uh, that you may uh, that you should obey it in in its lusts, and do not present it, uh, your uh, members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves uh, to God as being alive from the dead, and. Uh, your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall have no dominion over you, uh, for you are not under the law, but under grace. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. And isn't it awesome that we are not slave to sin with our relationship with Jesus? Amen. And so don't let that hold you down. And I pray that if you haven't made that choice, that today you would make that choice for Jesus. Amen. Amen. This is always exciting. You know, when, when a new believer makes that decision, because there are a lot of people that come to Christ that, that, that make, say the words, but don't get baptized. There are people that don't. That doesn't mean that they don't have their salvation, because it's not the baptism that, that saves anybody. It's the, uh, it's the mind, heart, you know, when... Once we accept Jesus into our heart as our Lord and Savior, that's when your salvation is right then and there. And 
nothing to do, nothing to do with this other than Jesus told us to be baptized, to go out and to be baptized. So this is a, a, a sign of obedience, one of the first signs of obedience of them coming to Christ. And, um, and so it's a beautiful thing. And it's especially beautiful for me today because, because I get to, uh, to baptize my two grandsons. So that's, that's really exciting. And, um, and the parents have thrown in some extra money to keep them underwater a little longer, to make sure that they're really, really baptized. So. So, this is Abel, and Abel is my youngest grandson, and, um, and they've been, let's see, 11 years? How long? 12. 12 years, he just told me. It's been a long time. Let me put it this way. When they came into our lives, um, they were still in car seats, so, uh, but what a wonderful blessing that they've been to, uh, to me and to, to us. And that when they started coming to our youth group on, um, on Sunday evenings, and you could just saw, see, uh, see them start absorbing the word. And, you know, and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't G. Paul um, sitting there and, and pounding it into their heads. You know, it, it, was, it was God's spirit that was moving in him. And so to say that I wasn't a little bit misty-eyed the days that, that they came to Christ would be a lie. So, so this is Abel. Abel is the adventurous one. I'm not gonna say he gets in trouble a lot. He doesn't. But you've seen his attitude change since he's come to Christ. And that's what, that's what Jesus is about, about changing us. So, one up here, down there. So, Abel, in your decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior in obedience to his command, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you hear a loud thunk, it's because I hit his head on the steps. <laughs> now, Jason, uh, needless to say, is the oldest uh, of the grandchildren. And, and, um, and Jason has a lot of feelings. Uh, he, he, uh, he emotes. He is very, you know, he, he's people feels things he, he perceives things and um, and so he's got a big heart not that Abel doesn't but 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 Jason's is, is just a little bit different and what a wonderful thing it is when when you start to see that heart come in line with Christ and and to, to see him light up again dur during our youth group when when we have question and answers he's always has questions. He always has has some kind of answer, um, and like I say to all all his, uh, the Sunday schools that I've taught, is that you know there are no stupid questions, and and he doesn't mind asking anything. It, isn't that a wonderful thing? Because most of you don't do that, right? Mm -hmm. 
So how wonderful it is that, that I have the opportunity to baptize Jason. You know, he's, he's getting ready to head into high school this year, uh, at the end of uh, in the next school year. And, uh, and I'm just so excited for him. I'm excited to see what have got. Jason, because you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior of your life, and because you want to be obedient and follow him in the, the sacrament of baptism, I baptize you in the name of the Father. So Danielle came to us a year, about a year ago, um, and Danielle, she didn't, she wasn't a believer. She didn't, she wasn't ready, she didn't know, something brought her, we know what, we know who. She wasn't shy about saying, you know, I, I, I just don't feel it. I just don't feel it. Until she did. She's, even when she wasn't feeling it, she was working around the church. She was helping. She was helping. She would help anybody that needed help. And, um, and she still does. But now she's got that light. She's she's accepted Christ. She knows what it's about. And then, and then for her to, to decide, make that decision to come and, and, and be obedient, it's a it's, again. I know, it's, I know it's getting old. It's a beautiful thing. It's it's just so amazing. You know, when kids come, it's one thing. But when an adult comes, you know that they feel it. You know that it's real. They know that it's real, and they made the decision. And she knows it. I mean, she's the reason we started the Beginner's Bible Study. Because she called me on the phone, and she, she texted me, and she goes, Hey, I need to learn. Danielle, because you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior of your life, and because you're following him in his command to us to be baptized, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Danielle decided to fall over some wood yesterday and get hurt her pitchfork and get hurt how many of you remember when Jesus came into your heart <coughs> isn't that a great thing it's just you know for some people it's like bam right it's bam now for for some of us it's like a, a small smoldering ash you know just kind of starts a little bit warm you know you feel it but you don't feel it and you're trying to ignore it and then God just blows on a little bit more, you know, puts something else in your life and it gets a little warmer, a little warmer, and fire gets a little bit bigger, and then all of a sudden, man, you are on fire. It doesn't matter how you got there, but you got to get there. 
Your challenge this week is super simple. Get out of your tree. Get out of your tree. Seek Him. Because you all know that you're not. We know that we're not. We might read the Bible. We might pray. But are we actively seeking God the way that He seeks us? And if we're honest with ourselves, some of you might be. Only you and God know that. But if you're not, do it this week and see if he doesn't indeed transform your life. Right? God bless you. I love you. You know, if you need anything, please call me. Come by. Mm-hmm.